it's Dave here, Holiday for Two, and glad you're joining us this morning. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel, Holiday for Two. It's getting, to, last I checked, it, the number was around 190. It's getting close to 200, and I told my wife, when we get to 200, we're going to pour a glass of wine and have a little celebration. Today I have a new video series that I'm going to be kicking off for you. It's called Arizona Off-Road Treks. And these are places that you can go to. You can go to for the day or you can go to for the whole weekend if you have a camper and you tow your ATV behind your camper or if you have a Jeep that you pull like we do or both. Um, if you have an ATV that you'd like to take or if you just want to go for the day and enjoy the ride, there are some beautiful rides and some that we've done around Arizona. The first one that I'm going to post on here, this first ride is called Arizona Off-Road Treks, China Dam and Fort Tool. That's China Dam, Arizona and Fort Tool, Arizona, which is north of Lake Pleasant. So I'm going to take you up and show you those. They're easy drives. You can do them in a Jeep. You can take them in an ATV or a quad. The offloading area is going to be on Castle Hot Springs Road, just around the uh, west side of Lake Pleasant, Castle Hot Springs Road, or you can go up to the old airstrip north of Lake Pleasant that I showed in a video a few weeks ago. So join us as I take you on Arizona off-road treks to Fort Tool and China Dam. I think you're going to like this if you have never been there before. Let's check it out. So someday when my ship comes in, I know just what we'll do. We'll pack our bags and quit our jobs and have a holiday for two. Well, just go like you're going to go to Lake Pleasant. Take Highway 74 and then turn at Castle Hot Springs Road and take Castle Hot Springs Road north as far as you can until you get to the top entrance of the lake. I'll show you in just a minute here on the map. Before you get to the uh, turnoff for the north boat ramp, there's a couple spaces here where you can offload. And this is where we offloaded the day we took our trip to China Dam and Fort Tool. Getting ready to go. It's a nice spot to get prepped for your trip and get everything ready. Snacks, whatever, ice chest. Then you take Cow Creek Road North, Go. you can also offload at the uh, airstrip that I showed you in the video. Take Cow Creek Road and then turn off on the um, next trail that goes up. I think this is still called Cow Creek Road. All of these are called Cow Creek Road, which is kind of strange, but get your trail map in case you need it. Then you're going to stop. You're finally going to reach the dead end at Old China Dam. Now the trail is pretty easy. We've taken this in the Jeep and we've taken this in the Razor. And it's a pretty easy trail. A few bumps and stuff, but not, nothing, nothing that anybody couldn't do. I highly recommend uh, at least a 12 inch clearance or more. Because there are some boulders that can be a little bit challenging. This particular day it had just rained the night before, so it's nice because the dust was tampered down. As you can see, we had a friend with a, a Jeep there, so he took the trail along. It was just fine. This is China Dam. This was an old dam created back in the 1920s and 30s for a mining in the area. They would back up water, probably about a two, three acre lake size. And when they finished up all their mining in the 50s, I, they just decided to blow out the and dam we're below. on the other side of the China Dam. Blast it out. This is the old part of the dam. And create last that out. Uh, opening there that will let and water there's through. There's a little diversion tunnel. And that was an actual diversion tunnel in case the water got too high. Uh, so it would run off. Again. Really well engineered for the time. This is looking under the dam. It's a fun place to take some hikes. Just be careful. There are some places where you can fall and you, you want to be careful. You have kids out there. Kind of keep an eye on them. It's a nice place to go hiking around, play in the water, or look for rocks. There's lots of different rocks in the area and lots of different minerals you can hunt for uh, in the riverbed. Once you're finished up with that, then take the trail back down and go across 
Now, I highly recommend a trail map for this. I'm, I'm showing you the trail on Google Maps to take. But there are really a lot of these trails don't have names, so you just kind of have to follow um, whatever trail map you have. Uh, Gaia or one of those trail maps work just fine, or Google Maps. And you get up to the uh, north end of the trail here, the northeast, and you'll find Fort Tool Homestead. This was an old miner's homestead years ago. When you get to the end of the trail, there's a place to park, and it will say Tool Creek Riparian um, Wilderness Area, so you can't go past the gate. It's a good little spot here to park, and there's room enough there probably for about seven or eight vehicles. Then you walk back to the Fort Tool Homestead. And it's really interesting because this homestead, there are, in, when you get inside, you'll see where Whoever built this used soup cans, filled them up with rocks and gravel and concrete, and created this. Like I said, probably they built this back in the 1915s, 1920s, and 30s, lived in it. Fort Tool. Whoever lived in this homestead did a lot of mining. And of course, there's a little cemetery here. And one of the, in one of the graves is a dog, the miner's dog. This is the old Fort Tool like miner's house here. Yeah, it looks like seaweed. Yeah, it looks like seaweed, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a closet or something, I guess. Yeah, it looks like seaweed. Look carefully at the walls when you're inside. You'll see the soup cans in some of the areas. <laughs> Couch. Pantry. Closet or something. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, not much left of the roof. Need some work. <laughs> Need some roofing. The kitchen. I'm guessing. <laughs> Steve Billy. Bed, it just needs a mattress on it, and you're all ready to go. <laughs> Once you're finished up there, you can take a side trip to the Golden Egg Mine. Please hit like, share, and subscribe, and appreciate your subscribing. We'll bring you more videos. The Golden Egg Mine is a great place to stop and have lunch. It's actually uh, it's recently it's been active. So safe travels on these roads, and stay tuned in just a moment. I'll show you more information on how to get there and other things to see if you're in that particular area. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, I'm going to show you how to get to China Dam and Fort Tool. If you've never been to Lake Pleasant in this area, it's really easy. You're going to look for Highway 74. And when you get close to Lake Pleasant, you want to go to uh, Castle Hot Springs Road and take Castle Hot Springs Road north. And if you're just going for the day, there are some places along Castle Hot Springs Road that you can offload. And if you want to go to the lake, you can turn off there and go to the north ramp. Otherwise, stop right in here and I'll show you the satellite mode. There are several places here to offload on Castle Hot Springs Road. In fact, they've added some new off-road offloading areas uh, that widen, basically widen the road so it's easier to offload here and a couple spots here that are real, real popular. If you get there kind of late, sometimes these areas are filled up. You can always go up and turn off Castle Hot Springs Road and offload just up north of here. There's places. If you want to stay and spend a night and spend a couple nights and see a lot of area, then I would go up to the north, uh, north end here to the old airstrip. It's just about another two miles up the road, and then there's places here where you can boondock. I showed a video about all this uh, a couple weeks ago, so go back and check on that, and I give much more information. There's a lot of places here you can boondock and park. So if you want to explore this area, this is a great staging area to uh, either for the day or for a weekend. A lot of people take their toy haulers up here for the weekend park, and not only do they go to China Dam, or Fort Tool, they also might make a trip up to uh, Crown King from this. This is a good staging area for that. 
But uh, the trail that you're going to take is going to be uh, this one right here, Cow Creek Road. Then you're going to turn, and the funny thing is, all of these roads have the same name. Look, Cow Creek, <laughs> Cow Creek Road. So you really need a trail map to kind of find your area. You're going to turn off of the main Cow Creek Road and take the little Cow Creek Road, I guess we could call it, and go north, kind of northeast up and around over to China Dam, and it dead ends right at China Dam. And then once you get to China Dam and you want to go up further to Fort Tool, you can't keep going across because this is a pretty rugged, uh, Cow Creek is pretty rugged through here, but there is a way to cross over Cow Creek if you come around down through here close to where it says Rick, Rich Gulch. There's actually a place to go down through the creek and then come up on the other side. And there's a few spots in there where it's a little bit rough, but not too bad. Like I said in the video, 12 inch clearance recommended. Air down your tires for a smoother ride. Just take this trail all the way up and around and north here to Fort Tool. I would say from China down to Fort Tool, I'll give you it's about a 45 minute drive if you just take your time and go easy. If you're hot rodding it, maybe 30 minutes. But uh, most people like to take their time, go 15, 20, 25 miles an hour. There are some rough spots as you get up here, so just beware of those. I think right in here is kind of a little rough spot when you go up the hill. Uh, but nothing that you couldn't do in a Jeep with a good clearance, four-wheel drive recommended. Razors, no problem. Quads, no problem. You just pick your line as you're going up and kind of avoid some of the big rocks. When you get up here to the homestead, there's a place to park down here that used to be you could go all the way up to the homestead years ago but they blocked it off with a fence because people were driving up in there and messing up the area so they decided the county did decide to part, put a fence there and kind of make this little parking area from here it's just a short walk up to the homestead and lots of things if you're got a, some time there's a you can walk through the creek who knows what you might find if you do a little gold panning take that with you. You can gold pan in the area because if the water's running, that's a great time to do that. But there's the homestead, Fort Tool Homestead. And just to kind of imagine people living in there 50, 70 years ago. My goodness, that was quite a ways from town. They had to bring their food out and like go into town maybe once every two weeks or so or to bring their food in. So I uh, I think that recently it was as occupied up until like the 1970s, I believe. If I remember reading about that. Uh, there were people living in there um, at uh, staking claims in this area and using that as a homestead and a base of operations. There's a lot of other mines in this area too. If you take the trail around and come up here, there's a gold and egg mine in this area. A good, great place to park up here and have lunch. There is an actual working mine, or at least it was until recently. It goes back in this little hole here. Um, there's a gate there, and you can see that somebody it goes back for about 50, 60, 80 feet. Uh, we actually walked in the cave there and saw a meerkat hiding up in one of the caves that go back in the mountain there. It was pretty interesting, a lot of fun. But if a good place to park, there is some shade down in here. There's actually palm trees. Believe it or not, you see palm trees growing in this area, and there's springs that come up out of the ground. So um, some of these palm trees are fed year-round by the springs in the area. And a lot of people don't realize that there are underground springs that run almost nearly year-round that feed a lot of these plants. That's why you see the greenery coming up there. It's not unusual around this area, uh, all between Fort Tool and Lake Pleasant, there's a couple other areas where you'll see some springs that come up out of the ground. And you'll see greenery like this in strange spots. And usually when you see greenery like this, that's a sign that there's something that's coming up that's feeding that year round and keeping it green. A lot of underground uh, springs and stuff that come up. And of course, mining claims. So you do want to be careful. If you're doing trails around this area, there are numerous mountain trails that are fun to take and travel around. You just want to be careful uh, uh, about private uh, claims and private land. Usually you'll see signs that say uh, mining claim ahead, do not enter, and things like that. And I highly advise you to, to heed those warnings. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I, we've never uh, tried to mess with that. 
but there are some private Columbia is one of those old mining claim areas where there's a lot of mining claims that are even today still active. You can see some activity even here on Google Maps. People go up there and they have uh, private claims and stuff that they manage. And if you're ever in this area, another nice trip that I'll probably get into later on is the uh, uh, Crown King Drive. And like I said, if you go to the um, north end of the lake there at the uh, airstrip and offload, uh, right there's the airstrip. That's a, probably about a three hour drive from there up to Crown King on the back way. And that's a very popular drive. One of these days we'll talk about Crown King. Another uh, ride that we did in an earlier video was up the Castle Hot Springs Trail up this way up the road. Lots of springs that you'll run into, little uh, springs along here when you go along Castle Hot Springs Road. And you can actually take Castle Hot Springs Road all the way over to Morristown and the Anderson Mill Mine Road that we talked about in the uh, another video on Morristown. So all of these areas are all connected through here. It's really a kind of a fun place to, uh, if you have a four by four to kind of explore. So I hope you enjoy that and get some time. If you've never been out there, it is a must see. Definitely uh, take a whole day, take a lunch with you, take some refreshments, take water, of course, and watch the heat. When it does warm up, it can be kind of bad out there. You want to have make sure you have water. Uh, a lot of times this is a very popular springtime riding area or fall when the weather starts to cool down. You don't see a lot of people doing this ride up up around here in the summertime. It is just too dang hot. So anyway, hope you have fun and uh, enjoy it. Talk to you later.